guys, it's Jordan here at Kentucky Plant Daddy, and we are going to round out my philodendron collection tonight. So, um, I think I have seven or eight more philodendron, and I'm just going to grab the first one and get started. Um, this is the philodendron golden goddess. I have this in an enclosed pond and leka situation. Originally it was in soil and then I cut it and re-put it into the semi-hydro. So um, it's been an easy plant, not the quickest grower, but I've also transitioned it and um, put it on the back burner. I hate to say it like that, but like it was healthy. It's been healthy like as a transfer and I haven't really given it much attention ever since. I make sure it's got water but um, I haven't really given it any special treatment. So this is the Golden Goddess. It grows pretty tall. Eventually I'm going to get a stake for it so that it can have some support. And I really like this yellow. I like yellow plants. Yellow is my favorite color actually. So I like the Golden Goddess. And so when the leaves first come out, they're more yellow like this. That's a brand new leaf, and then if you see this one's a brand new leaf, and they're more yellow, versus like after a little bit of time, they kind of fade to a very light green. So, the Golden Goddess. Um, the next one that I'm going to bring is a struggle plant. This is the Philodendron Brentiatum. And it's in pond. I had it in soil and it was kind of giving me some fits. So I, I put a moss pole here hoping that maybe and like the semi-hydroponics maybe like the added moisture. Also I have a humidifier in my like plant room where this struggle plant lives and nothing is really making it better for me. Um, I've cut it numerous times. I have dwindled this large plant to like this small few cuttings and i'm not happy with this plant it's not happy with me i have tried and tried and tried and i, I love it it's beautiful it's a hartley philodendron with silver variegation like it's beautiful i would love to have a humongous plant of this or not even humongous climbing up a moss pole or like just like a nicer mature version of this plant but this is a plant that i will not be buying again if this fails me um it's just too hard and you know that's not a problem if you are willing to dedicate the time to this and maybe figure it out further but i have a hundred plants and this one is like nothing that i do to figure out this plant is working so philodendron brandy i hope that it lives everyone say prayer thoughts and prayers for this plant because if it doesn't work it'll just not be in my collection um, and I think that that's a common problem with this plant. Like numerous people complain about this plant, but I have also seen people get this plant under control. Gracie, don't bite my plant, honey. Gracie's here. She is nibbling on plants. I'll put a picture of Gracie right there. But, um, okay. Philodendron Brandy. We, we love her, but we don't like her. Okay. Um, this is a cutting actually i wanted to bring it down here because i bought it as a entire plant this um came there's another section up here that i cut off of it and then there was a bottom section that i cut to and the reason why is because um i got this from plant haven toronto and i don't know maybe like in shipping or what but the top cut of it had kind of like blackened and so it was gonna have to put off a new um, growth point anyway. So I chopped it into two um, about this similar size. And then also inside the plant, there was a much, much smaller plant that I have still upstairs. Um, but I'm going to put this on a moss pole after I get it rerooted. It's in um, fluval stratum. So this is the philodendron soda roy if i didn't say that sorry there was a fungus gnat and i don't really have fungus gnat problem but for some reason today i've seen like two so maybe i do have a problem just don't know <laughs> but um it's right now in fluval stratum and it'll be two weeks maybe and i'll be able to move it over to a semi-hydroponic setup um my next 
philodendron is the strawberry shake. So here's like some pink and green variegation. It's very pretty. And then the rest for me has been like green and yellow. I don't know if you can see the yellow there. And then this is red like tipped and then mostly green. So it's put out a new leaf for me here. We're going to see what that pops open with as it unfurls. But it's not attached to the moth pole yet. I'm hoping, you know, eventually to get it there. But it's just a seedling. It's in um, ponds. So it's in semi-hydro setup. It was in soil when I got it. So it's also been going under its own little transition. But it's put out two leaves for me very recently. This one that's about to unfurl and this top one right here is just now hardening off. So hopefully as it grows, I'm going to see if it'll variegate for me. I'm not really sure, but we will keep an eye on it. Um... It's been a fast grower though so far. Um, here is my painted lady. So this was an established plant, in, like much bigger than this, in soil. And I chopped it because I wanted to get it in semi-hydro. And then I rehomed the bottom cut. And now it's these two top cuts. And they've put out new leaves. I don't know if you can tell, like, here in the back, that's a new leaf that's, like, unfurling. And then right here, that's a new leaf that still got parsh partially in the caterpillar. But this plant, I have noticed, um, if you keep it in high light, the new leaves come out almost bright yellow splattered and then as time goes by they will fade to this which you can still see that there's yellow variegation all throughout it but like the new leaves it's like very pronounced and then also it has these red stems which it just a very tropical beautiful looking plant i like my painted lady a lot so um, I'm happy that she's liking the Leica so far. You can see she's got a root there. That's a root for whatever reason is growing up. Um, there's some roots there and there. So um, we'll see. And then I just have a moss pole back there. It's not attached or anything, but maybe eventually I'll attach it. Maybe not. I'm thinking about taking the moss pole out and just getting it a stake because this is one of those plants that doesn't really require a moss pole. Um, and stakes are just overall kind of easier than the moss poles are. Um, my next plant was a no ID plant for a long time. But now I think that it is a philodendron atopoensis. I don't know if I'm saying that right at all. But I will put the name of it here and if you guys think that it's not id correctly of course like leave it in the comments what you think this is i thought it was given to me as a two-leaf cutting and i thought initially maybe it was a billetier um but it has like red in the stem and here and like in the back of the leaf when they first come out is like pretty red and they're getting longer but not skinnier so I do think that that's the newest leaf. I have a predatory mite sachet on it because um, it was right beside of my Monstera Thai Constellation and it had thrips. So I'm scared that potentially this new leaf has thrips and thrips like to go after the new leaf and like there's going to be a new leaf popping up there soon. I don't know if you can tell, but there is. So I've got this sachet on this new leaf, hopefully warding off uh, evil thrip spirits. But um, this came in soil. I a long time ago transitioned it to um, semi-hydro, and this has been um, a very rewarding plant for me. Like I like the growth pattern and the growth rate, and um, it's just really like Leica, and it's like my environment, and it's grown for me over this summer and it's just been really rewarding the root system is popping i don't know if you can tell but like i love i know that like a lot of people don't like to do enclosed systems for leca or pond because 
Um, they like to drain, drain them. They like to, um, what is it that they call it? Flush them, sorry. And um, I still flush it sometimes. Like, I will fill it all the way to the top, and then I'll just put my hand over the Leka and, like, drain it back out. But um, I really like the all-glass look of it being enclosed. And then also, none of my plants seem to have a detriment thus far. I think you just have to pay attention to your root system and at what point that, you, like, getting it out of this would be an issue. So it's not been an issue for me. I'm going to keep doing this for now. I do have several that are not in enclosed systems, um, like... When I say that, I guess what I'm trying to show you is that this has a pot down in it. And so that's not technically enclosed. Like I could take this out at any time. And there's just like a little bit of water down in the cash po. That's about one third of the way up. So that's the difference in an enclosed system and then like a not enclosed system. And then my last philodendron that I have to show you, but also that's in my collection, is this beautiful philodendron black cardinal. And it has a new leaf here, and it has a new leaf here. Um, it also has a new growth point there where my nose is at. <laughs> but um, this has been a really rewarding plant. It's been super easy. Um, it has caught numerous times. I don't know what it is about this plant, um, mealybugs. So usually what will happen is I'll spray it off, I'll neem oil it, I'll do whatever, I'll alcohol it, and I won't see them for forever. But as new leaves emerge, I will find mealybugs on the new leaves, like almost like they're hiding in the new caterpillars. So I just kill the mealybugs at that point. And um, this one has its own personal um, sachet that I just took off for the video because I knew it was big and I would probably sling it off. But um, it's in dirt. It, I would love to have this in semi hydro, but I am nervous because as you can tell, I don't know if you can get like the full this is a big plant it's a big statement corner plant um it usually sits i don't know if i can see you see that stand back there it usually sits there so it's like a big corner plant as you like come down my stairs you see it as you enter my door you see it to the entrance of my home so this is just it's one of my favorite plants if i do transition it to semi hydro which i do plan to do I just don't know when. Um, I'm going to air layer. I don't know if you can see. Okay, you see those aerial roots? I'm going to air layer those. And then I'm going to chop it there. So, I already have a root system started. And then when I make the chop, maybe my big established plant won't shock is what I'm hoping. But um, I am nervous that it will um, so this was the last of my philodendrons. Um, you guys, please go follow me at Kentucky Plant Daddy on Instagram, and I'll put the handle here. Um, and then also don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and this video. Um, the next video that I'm going to make is I'm definitely going to show you my alocasia which are three plants that I have, but um, I'm going to start speckling in my plants that I don't have a lot of in one genus. Like, I only have one Schifflera, I only have one Tradescantia, um, those types of plants. So we're going to come back to the next video and we're going to have probably about eight plants of um, all three of my alocasias, and then I'm going to start speckling in those random plants that I have. Um... If you guys like this video, like I said, please like it. And thank you guys for watching. Hey guys, I know that I already did the outro to my video, but I found one more philodendron. I actually have three of these. This is the biggest one. This is my philodendron gloriosum. And it's the only crawling um, philodendron that I have. Um, this is in pawn. I have one in Leka, and then I have another smaller one that I also put in pawn. So I'm just... Um, 
these are new to me. I'm not very great with them as far as like, I don't know like the care that they like. So I have them all in different locations, um, seeing what kind of environments that they like. This is a north facing window. My other ones are actually under grow lights, but one's in Lego, one's in Pond, and this one's in Pond. So this has a predatory mat mite sachet because I've heard that Gloriosum are spider mite magnets. Um, and this is kind of one of the newest leaves. This is one of the newest leaves here. And then I don't know if you can see, but that is going to be a leaf. So I've not gotten used to the growth pattern on this one yet, but I can tell that I'm going to really like the Gloriosum, um, just because, um, it seems to be pretty hardy and, um, we're going to hopefully get it long and pretty. This is about the biggest container that I had. Um, the root system fit really well, but I think these grow like lengthwise. So I might have to transplant this. Um, but anyways, um, like and subscribe this video and uh, thanks again.